Hi, everybody. Bible Talk with Carolyn B. I have returned. Um, Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about the wilderness period. It seems to be the topic that God wants me to discuss a whole lot lately. And so I'm, I wrote it all out. I typed it all out. And I said, well, I'm going to type out what I want to say. And then I don't get confused in when I my thoughts and, you know, I can relate this to you the way God wants me to. Okay. Listen to me, guys. Here we go. I want to talk to you today about the wilderness period that we all must go through for our walk with God. This wilderness period, according to Word of God Today, and the website is wordofgodtoday.org, this wilderness period, according to Word of God Today, can last for days or years, according to how quickly we learn its lessons. I can attest to that myself. When I learn the lesson quickly, when I give in, when I submit to God, surrender, I get past it much, much faster. So the wilderness period is a time of God's tests and trials in our lives. And it is meant to help us learn faith and endurance. However, we tend to think of the harshness of our wilderness periods as a time when we feel restricted unable to move forward, and a time of a punishment of sorts. But I'm here to tell you guys that every person who is in Christ must go through this period from beginning to end, you guys. Most Christians go into the wilderness period and turn back from beginning uh, and turn back because of the so-called brutality of it. I believe these are the people who become satanic and live in ways that will seal their eternities in hell. I believe these are the people that turn into witches and warlocks and casting spells and, you know, they, they become miserable and want you to be miserable constantly. And these are the ones that monitor your life on a daily basis, on an hourly, secondly basis. And it's like a network of demons and demonic activity where one I, I mean, I got a, a person live next door to me in this apartment building who's constantly trying to hear or see, actually see where their mind's eye, what's going on over here. I had to uh, uh, rebuke her this morning for, you know, mind, like mind your own business. And there's nothing going on here. Everybody knows who I am and what I do. And there's nothing, they, they've already monitored me and there's nothing new. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing else that I do every day. So, back to this, what I was talking about. Every Christian must go through the wilderness period. You must go through it and complete it in order to come out on the other side, you guys, and be a different person. But I, I'm getting to that. They turn back because of the brutality of the wilderness period. And I don't blame them for feeling awful and it being excruciatingly, painfully spiritually painful, but you got to go through it. God made me go through it. He helped me. He assisted me so that I could come out and tell you guys that you will get through it. Okay. And everybody's wilderness is different. And I find that people that don't go through the wilderness are the people that are sitting up in church all the time and not really have given their hearts to God and who follow church doctrine and dogma, and who quench the spirit, and who criticize gossip, and sleep with pastors, and sleep around in the church. I find that these are people, the kinds of people that turn back out of their wilderness. And then there are those that turn back, but there are also those who become stuck in their wilderness, you guys. Because they don't want to go back to where they came from, which is quite understandable because that is not me either. But they also do not want to move forward through it because of the excruciatingly painful uh, experience that we have to endure during that wilderness. 
I'm not going to continue to tell you how excruciatingly spiritually painful it is without letting you know that there are bright times, good times. I mean, you know, ease in the wilderness, especially when you turn to God and talk to God, especially when you pray, especially when you fast, especially when you de decide to let your pride down. Uh, it's hard to let our pride down because we know that most of the time the demons are coming out of people with demons, you know, and so it's really hard for us to cast aside our pride and get through our wilderness period because that means that we're submitting to our enemies. It looks that way, but we're not. We're submitting to God. We're submitting to the fact that we are not strong enough to compete with devils. We are not strong enough to compete with people that have a network of demons that will catch you up here and catch you up over here and do this to you there. And We're not strong enough, guys. And I'm telling you guys that this is what the world is coming to. We deal with a network of demons who are trying to corral us to kill us all, to destroy us, to make our lives a living hell because theirs is one. When you go, Jesus said, uh, God said, nobody that puts his hand to the plow and turns back is worthy of the, of the, 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 of God's, of heaven or something. You guys, if you want to look it up and give me a comment, let me know where that scripture is and exactly what it says. But I know that God says, once you start, you guys in your wilderness, it's not good to turn back. And this is something that made me go through it. I know it would not be good for me to turn back. I can't say, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about where I am in my wilderness period in a, in a few minutes. Anyways, there are some Christians that go back to their old ways. Some that become stuck. And then though there are those who don't even believe there is an end to the wilderness. That was me. I couldn't believe I, I would get through it. I, would, I wouldn't have believed it if God had not showed me at, you know, at different times during this wilderness period thing. But this is what you'll get if you persevere. And then Jesus would tell us to persevere in his word when he spoke. And perseverance is a thing with Christians. We must persevere. We can't help anybody unless we persevere, unless we go through a wilderness. We can't really, really help anybody. So there are those who go back, those who become stuck in the wilderness, and those that don't even believe that they'll ever get out of it. But that's not true, as I just discussed. And you... All you can see in front of you when you're thinking that there's no end to it is that the warfare is too too hard for you. It's too painful. And all, and you don't seem like you have any friends and family. It's like everybody betrays you. Everybody shuns you. Nobody wants to help you. But I think it's purposed by God that you can only look to him for help. And that's good for you. It's good for us. It, it doesn't look like it. And I'm telling you, everything that doesn't look good for you and it's hard for you in the Lord is always an end to it that's going to be worth it. I never thought what I was going through would ever be worth it, but I can see that things will be worth it. But whatever we, we must endure in our wilderness, we must remember that there is an end to it. There is a way through it. And on the other side of it is a whole new you and a new spiritual world for us. On this side of my wilderness, guys, I find that God speaks to me in that still small voice I used to always hear about and believe in, but it is really him speaking. It's a really still small voice. It's like maybe one sentence, one word sometimes. It's really like embedded deep in your soul where you know that came from somewhere. It wasn't me. And when you weigh the spirits, discern the spirits, you will find out that was God talking. And the devil, I'm telling y'all, when God talks to me in that still small voice, there's Satan to make me think he said it. 
or that's not really God or this and that and the other. But God knew that would happen at the beginning because he wanted me to learn his voice. And I hear it and I'm elated with it. I'm elated that God is speaking to me with instructions, with his love. And there's nothing like it. That's because I went through my wilderness period. And now I'm going to go on and uh, finish reading what I have here. He also causes me to feel protected and untouchable by people, demons, and people and their demons. Thereby removing any fear from my life for moving forward in his purpose for me. That is the truth. That's how I feel. I can tell you that in that other realm, when you get through that wilderness, you will not fear harm. You will not fear like, uh, that somebody can hurt you. You will feel untouchable. You will know when you see a certain situation arise that looks like you could die. You can pray to God. This is after you come out of that wilderness or during the end, near close to the end, because you gained that trust and faith in God. But when you pray to God, about a fearful situation, I'm telling you, God will unravel that that scary thing and make make it look like this big, and then you know you know God. Then you know you are protected. There's nothing like feeling protected by and knowing that it is God and that you are. And there's nothing that can supersede God, trump God, or nothing when He wants something from His children. Nobody or in, no nothing is going to change that. I got to go on because I got a couple of pages here. I realize that God leads me to a pl place of absolute freedom. I wait a minute. I realize that I have that God has led me to a place of absolute freedom, a place of no constraints because He can now trust me. I, me having gone through my wilderness, God can trust me. I know that. And I know that he tells me that. And a place where he will forever be by my side, just in case I become deceived and need his guidance. I always need God's guidance, but the assurance of being protected from evil cannot be matched. And hallelujah to that. That's written down here too. But I digress. I had always heard that your blessings from God depend on how much suffering you endure. I always believed that, but for some reason, I did not believe that anything, that, I mean, I believed that nothing could make up for what I was going through. I really did, you guys. I didn't think there was any good thing good enough to patch up the pain and the heartache and be worth me having to suffer like I did, right? Okay. That was simply the devil trying to convince me that the suffering in my wilderness was not worthy of the pain, was not worth the pain. That wilderness was a place of darkness, full of evil, and I indeed, hang on, could not see in front of me, you guys. I couldn't see in front of me. I couldn't see the end, and I could not fathom anything that could make any of it all better. But this is the very place where God showed me whom he was, and that if I trusted him, you guys, nothing was going to harm me, and nothing was going to harm me there in the wilderness and anywhere else beyond my wilderness, and that every step I took through the wilderness caused me to transform. This is what the purpose of the wilderness is, to change you into a much better person that I had ever thought, that I ever thought I would have been inside of me or would have been inside of me or probably wasn't but God gave me you know what I'm saying I this new person I am oh my god who is she you know um more grace more forgiveness more mercy more love more oh my god I'm so grateful to God thank you father God I always needed to feel this way I always needed to be this person and God knew it he knew it when I didn't know it and he knows who you need to be also and he cares and he loves you. He cares. He, he, you are the purpose for the globe he created with the things on it. So to sustain us, we are the purpose. You know, we are the reason the earth is here. So now, 
where where every step I took caused me to transform. The wilderness was a cocoon. It really was restricting because God did not want me to have any space to do anything but go through it to its end. He, God didn't give me no room to turn around. He didn't get, when I wanted to turn around, God would come to me and pat me on my back and assure me it's going to be all right. Um, God was there in that wilderness. You guys got to understand that. God is there with you. All you got to do is seek him out. Seek him out in that dark place and, and let him know how you feel in that dark place because God will comfort you there. He will comfort you because he wants you to go through it. You know, because he knows on the other side is straight bliss. Straight blessings that you your mind never can fathom where it would come from, how that could uh, occur, and everything. God is omnipotent, omniscient. He has everything. He knows everything. You will be rewarded for going through your wilderness period. All right? So, and then, uh, oh, okay. But this is the very place God showed me who he was and it, that if I trust him, nothing was going to harm me and, there, and anywhere else beyond my wilderness. And every step I took through the wilderness caused me to transform into a much better person that I had never thought would have been inside me. The wilderness was a cocoon. It really was restricting because God did not want me to have any space to do anything but go through it to its end. You guys, if I'm repeating myself, that's because God want me to read this verbatim. Um as I wrote it here. So, you know, he didn't have me write it so I could veer off and start talking my way. No, nope, he wants me to read this. And I he was making me realize I'm not going to hold my people so long by keep veering off the path. So, praise the Lord. You see how good he is? See, can you dig God? Can you understand? Oh, my goodness. He is so good, you guys. Okay. I felt that if God were punishing me, but I know now that God was only correcting me. And if we are honest, we need correction, you guys. But you want to know what the wilderness really brings out in God's people? Obedience. In a summation of what anyone's wilderness period is, I would describe it as a place where God tests our obedience to him. I believe that every other lesson God wants us to learn during our wilderness can only be learned through obedience to him. First, then he blesses us with another trial to overcome since we overcame the one trial because we became stronger for the next trial. It's many trials in that wilderness, don't get me wrong, but eventually you'll knock them all out. You'll knock them all down and you will emerge a new person. I promise you all though, that at some point during your wilderness, you will be able to hear God tell you that you are doing good or you will feel him nudge you to keep going and not let this hurdle delay you. And there will be many other things God says and does with you that I don't believe he could say and do when we are not obedient enough to endure our wilderness. I'm, and then I wrote down all the steps I went through from the beginning of my salvation until now. Step number one, I was born a sinner. Step number two, I was a willing sinner. Step number three, I became weary of my sinful life. Step number four, I prayed to God for help. Step number five, I gave my life to Christ through the sinner's prayer. Step number six, I immediately began my wilderness period, even though it was not apparent at that time. Number seven, I began to attend church worship services and Bible studies. Number eight, I began to really know persecution. Oh my God, Father God, I really began to see it and feel it and know it, live through it. Number nine, I was introduced to the reality of spiritual warfare, demons, devils, witches and warlocks, and curses of many kinds. Number 10, I realized that I was in my wilderness period at that point. Number 11, I cried. I rebelled against God because of the pain and fought against every reason to endure it. Y'all, I was out there talking, asking God, Lord, if you love me, why could you do it? But every, I'm telling y'all, God is good. Every time I asked him that, he reminded me of what Jesus went through. He reminded me that his son, he took his own son, his own body, his own piece of him through it all, and that I can make it through it. 
Number 12, I found that God was actually there for me and would comfort me if I would quit complaining and ask him to comfort me. Ask him to help me. Ask him to love me through it. He did it. He would. Number 13, I finally see the wonderful light at the end of the tunnel. I got 19 of them. Number 14, I am now entering into God's realm where only newly constructed beings are able to dwell. Number 15, I know God's heavenly nature. Number 16, I will live and not die. Number 17, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Number 18, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Number 19, and the last one is, I await further instructions from God as we speak here today. Hallelujah. You guys, I'm a new person who hears the very small, still voice of the heavenly creator. And I'll tell you all, I cannot be more content. I'm in love with with God, his son, and his Holy Spirit. And right now, I don't want any other thing on this earth. That, ha- that the earth has to offer because I do not want to ever live without being obedient to God ever again. I never want to go back and I never want to go through this wilderness ever again. Because you know God said, you know, when you backslide, it's seven times harder. And that's all that was for me. It was seven times harder. I don't never want to. Lord, save me and help me in Jesus' name. And this is where I am now, and I pray that you will, you all will continue on to reach the end of your own wilderness, because we actually have to. It will not kill you, even though it seems like it. It's, uh, that, that's the devil. It only seems like it. He's a liar, and the truth isn't in him. And he's going to make it as hard as he can, but then there are limits. Believe me, the limits you see God put on the devil, if, it, if God lifted those limits... You wouldn't make it through the wilderness. You would die. You couldn't make it. Uh, And you will experience God, the fullness of what God was trying to do in you at the end. You really will. If there's anyone out there who knows they need the Lord and want to commit to his son to get their wilderness period over with, I ask you to pray the sinner's prayer with me and become saved in Jesus Christ right now. Would you bow your heads and pray this, repeat after me. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent your son Jesus into the world to save the world from their sins. Please save me now, Father, as I know that Jesus is, I confess that Jesus is your son, and I confess that I believe that he died for me, but you raised him from the dead. Thank you, God, that these are the only things you ask us to confess in order to be saved. And now, Father, I am saved. I know it, I feel it, and I thank you, God. Blessed be the holy name of God the Creator. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Now, if you pray that prayer, you became saved at that moment. Heaven is happy over one sinner who repents. The 99,000 people who think they're righteous and don't need God. Heaven is happy over one sinner. And he's not happy over 99,000 people who don't think they don't need to repent. They, he's happy over you just because of that. Praise his name. Now, what you do from here, God bless us, is do what I did. Start reading because your wilderness period just began. It may not be intense right now, but it'll get there. Start picking up that Bible. Start reading God's word. Set aside time. You need time. You need a space. You need quiet. You need um, you need separation from other people. You need to take time out to talk to God. Even when it's excruciatingly painful and you mad at God and you just, just angry at him. Talk to him anyway because he understands. He understands that you feel like he's putting you through. Oh. A chopping my underneath somebody's meat grinder, but he does understand, and he will help you. He will accept your prayer and will help you get through it. And if there's anyone else out there who is going through their wilderness period, you guys, or if there's anyone out there who believes 
in you and are wondering why all the warfare and it that believes in God and all the and wondering why all the warfare. I would like to pray for you too. So, Father God, thank you that you save the people today. And those that are saved that are going through their work through this period, God, where they really just don't comprehend and understand, as I did not, why they had to go through such. But God, I know now, and I want to offer them comfort through Jesus Christ. I comfort them in the name of Jesus, God. I pat their them on the back. I hold them tight. I encourage them with the word of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Bible, God. And I pray, God, that you give them strength. Give them that dexterity because God on the other side of this warfare in that wilderness is a victorious victor with a sword, a two-edged sword, just like his Savior, Jesus Christ. God, Father God, it's a painful, excruciating place to be. And Father God, I thank you that you got me out. And I thank you because you're going to stick by those who are in that wilderness period. And get them out. I know so, God. I know and I trust. And guess what, God? Belief God, makes me know that you will. Because belief put me in my wilderness period. I believed on Jesus Christ. And I had to go through the wilderness period. So they believe on you, God. And now, Father, bring them through like you did me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, God. Thank you and amen. Thank you, Abba, Father, Abba. Abba, Father, thank you so much. And now, people, this is the conclusion of this talk. I'm glad I wrote it all down because, for God's sake, I didn't get all tongue-tied as usual. I got, I get tongue-tied, but I'm just practice. This is all practice because someday I'll be a great orator, a great speaker. You know, like people like Dale Bryner and ooh, people that can really tell a story, like. Tony Evans, people that, oh my God, can really relate a message like T.D. Jakes and Sarah Jakes, honey. And so therefore, you guys, stay in the Lord, keep praying, keep reading your word, set aside a lot of time for God every single day. And if you can't make that appointment every day, make it at the nighttime. Just give God the, the, let God know that you and your intentions are great. That's what you need to do. He needs to know you intend to do his will, be obedient, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, guys, with that, I'm going to stop, and I thank God for you guys. Thank you for listening to me, and I guess I'll be back for you soon. Listen, if you have any comments, please don't neglect to give me comments. Give me criticisms, constructive criticism, and give me your hopes, your dreams, and you know, or whatever this message taught you, or whatever, and then write them in the comments, write me at Bible Talk, Post Office Box 115, 115, 115, Buffalo, New York, 14220, or email me at btwcb at yahoo.com, that's my Bible Talk website, I mean email, okay, thank you guys so much, and God be with you, and I love you, and I'm so glad that I'm able to talk to you today. God bless you. See you later.